I played some no squad rec center last night to hit 99 overall on my first build. And I got lucky because this team that I was put on played great together. Everybody's playing defense. Everybody's passing the ball. Nobody cares who scores. Our builds are complementing each other. And this was a fun journey to 99 overall. I got to test out a lot of different ratings. It was really smart for me to upgrade my dunk last because I realized I don't need the 89 dunk. For online play, oh, look at that chase down block. I actually got a few chase downs and I'm using my max plus one to put that badge up to silver to see if it would do something. But I realized with my block rating, most of the time I'm not in position to get those chase downs because I don't have enough speed on this build. I put my wingspan up that high to get the 68 block because you never know. Some years, 68 block that bronze badge. Sometimes it goes crazy. You never know. Splash. So because of the wingspan on this build, that's why I went with the mid range so high so I could get the gold shooting badges. But now I think when I remake this build, I'm not going to go for the 68 block. I think I'd rather just have a high interior defense and a high strength because you get offensive badges and defensive badges when you up your strength. So I bring the dunk down to 80 and that's gonna give me that flexibility. I've been fooling around in the build. I'm curious to see how that works. Splash. So now that I don't need the block rating, I can lower my wingspan and my three ball can get to 93. It could even go to 94, but I'm not trying to go too high up there. I'm not trying to get 99.3 or anything like that. I want to be an in-between guard because I want defense to baby shot clock cheese. Got him, coach. Oh, what a little stop and go. A little hesitation move. Got the big man leaning to throw down that slam. So I'm trying to be the second primary ball handler, and I'm also trying to be the second Defender, not the true lockdown, but that secondary lockdown. So I'm trying to combine those two builds into one. That's my vision. And I've done it here with this build, but the strength is going to take it to another level because if I bump somebody on the perimeter and I've got a movable enforcer, gold, or even Hall of Fame because I'm max plus one if I'm cheesing like that, maybe it's a stone wall. I don't know. I can't wait to see how it works. Because I've played like 20-something rec games now, and I've seen a few players. It looks like maybe they got that strength going on because they're moving bodies. They're moving people out the way. And I've even had some guys switch on to me, and then I can't drive by them. But it's only that one defender. If it gets switched, if somebody else is on me, then I'm blowing by and I'm moving again. So that's got me very intrigued. But I've got to give my impressions of this game now. Let's, let's start with the bad news first. In the rec center, the paint defense is terrible. And you're actually going to see a clip right here. Look at this. I'm bumping this guy. My badge popped. But he just went right by me. The pass made it there. Now, he didn't go up and score. He could have. Because there's been so many games. We've played teams where they're scoring all their points by just doing a backdoor cut. And you're following the cut. You see the cut. You're standing right in front of them. You even hit them with the on-ball pest. And it doesn't matter. Even though there's an animation, they collide. You pass that ball to them, they catch it, and they're in front of you, and then they dunk it. So that guy on that clip, he could have dunked it, but he just didn't realize that he could, and he passed it up. He did something else, but that is very annoying. And it's not just me or my build. I've seen centers do the same thing. Centers on my team, somebody's cutting back door. They did exactly what I did. They moved and followed him, bumped him, and then the guy still caught it and dunked right in their face. You can't do a back door cut and dunk it wide open when somebody's looking right at you. Like, look, I just did it to that guy. I threw the pass. He didn't steal it. You see how he tried to steal it and didn't steal it? That's the problem with the backdoor cuts. You would think that that pass would be easy to steal, but it's not. But then all these lane passes, those are just, you're just jumping out the gym. You're just flying all over the court, stealing passes in the lanes, right? The passing lanes are crazy. But when somebody's cutting and you're looking right at them and you're following their path, and you're backing up with them into the paint, you can't steal that. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, look at that bounce pass right there. Hey, look at that dish right there. So my teammates, they told me that when they play the proving grounds, when they play the park, the paint defense is not like that. So it's something about the rec center 
they messed it up. I don't know what it is, the sliders or something, but the paint defense is just bad. So let me know in the comment section if it's like that in other modes too. Now we might as well talk about the shooting. So 2K went back to the full white shooting system, and that's the way it's been since the very beginning. Back in the older 2Ks, it was always like that. You would time the shot, but the game would kind of decide if you're allowed to make it or not. Sometimes they wouldn't let you make it, right? And here's another issue with the backdoor cuts. If you just go back to the three-point line, see, he's trying to stop that backdoor cut. It's tough enough to get the collision, and you might not get the steal. They might get wide open, so you're trying to back up and follow it. But if the offensive player just runs back, that's a wide open three every time. So they really got to do something about this backdoor cut cheese because you're taking a huge risk trying to follow that backdoor cut, bump it, even though they can still score even if you bump it. It's not really worth that risk. You might as well just try to get the steal, and most of the time you're not going to get the steal. But something bad needs to happen. When somebody forces a backdoor cut and you bump them with off-ball pass and they pass it anyway, the pass needs to be fumbled. It needs to go out of bounds. Something bad needs to happen. They can't just grab it and then dunk it wide open. But back to the shooting. 2K went back to the full white system. But the last couple of years, we've been on that green system where if you time it right, you get a green. So when this game first came out, a lot of people were thrown off because as they're shooting the ball and it says slightly early, it's not really slightly early. It's just that the full whites are back. But when you see slightly early, you think it's like last year's game and the year before that. So now you're going to release a little bit later because you're going to say, OK, I guess I went early. Maybe there was some lag. Right. But then when you do that, you see a slightly late. And then now you're second guessing your release. You have no more release consistency. You're not even hitting where the shot is supposed to be. And then, of course, in this game, we got all those random jump shot timings. That's been in the game the last few years, but we've had the real green window, so it didn't really matter. It didn't affect you as much. This year, it's annoying when you get one of those sped up shots or slowed down shots when you're wide open because there isn't this green window, but they're just randomizing the shots. See, back in the day, when we had the full white system, we never had all those random jump shot timings. That was something new that they introduced in the last few 2Ks. The first time that 2K introduced the random jump shot timings, it was when you got contested. They started speeding up your shot when you were contested. That actually made sense. That's not a wide open shot. There's a defender in your face, so now you gotta hurry up the shot. And then one year they did it with the stamina. Remember they had this badge where if your stamina was low, your shot would be very slow. And then they had a bass to try to help with it. So they progressively kind of added it in there. And we know why they're doing it because of the cheaters, the people that are cheating with the shooting. And it's funny because before my career in park and all this stuff started taking off online, when you would play 2K online, you had to memorize the jump shots of all the players on the court. So if you played with multiple teams, that was dozens of different players and jump shot timing was never difficult. I did it all the time. I played with so many different teams and players. I never had a problem timing anybody's shots. Shooting was always easy. So what made people come up with a device that helps them time the shot when it was never difficult to do in the first place? Because when you're playing park, you only have to master one shot, and that's the shot of your player. You don't need to know eight players. You don't need to know all five starters and then some bench players. You just need to know one shot. So how did we get here to where we have these cheating devices? They're going so crazy that now we have all this random stuff going on with the shooting because they're trying to combat the cheaters. That's why they're doing all that random stuff, because if they don't, then the cheating device right, is going to be right every time and it's going to be a nightmare. But here's the problem. We did take a step back by going back to the full whites. They should have just left it at the full whites then. They should have never introduced the green system that we've been using the last few years. And look at Chris Five tossing me a grenade. Shot clock cheese. Splash. He tried to set me up, but I missed the splash, man. I make it splash, man. But 2K should have never gone to the green shooting version that we were using the last few years because now going back to this full white system, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It is a step back. I like the green shooting version, but the problem is 
our percentages are really high when we have the green shooting version. Hey, look at that step back move. You've got guys shooting 70, 80% from the three point line because you have a true green window and people are gonna learn their shot. They're gonna know their shot. They're gonna have the ratings. They're gonna have the hot spots. So they're gonna shoot 80% and that's crazy. It's a video game. So yeah, it is, but I understand why they wanna throw in some random stuff because they just don't want it to be lights out where every shot is going in. This is a debate that the community is always gonna have. We have a lot of different gameplay philosophies in all different types of areas of the game. We're always gonna fight over these things, but we're gonna have to figure this out because we've got the cheating devices, they're here. Hey, look at that spin dunk. So how do we combat the cheating devices but let everybody shoot with skill? I think the only way to fix this is they just have to fix the defense. And look at Tastic giving me that assist. That, that was an assist right there. You saw that shot he took in the corner. That was an assist. Thank you for that rebound and the two points, Tastic, the putback. In my opinion, the only way to fix this shooting problem is they just have to fix the defense. They have to make it harder to get open because it's very easy to get open in this game. It always has been. And the offense is always faster than the defense. There's so many moves that when you activate these moves on offense, how can a defense keep up? You have to guess. You have to be a time traveler. You have to know what's going to happen in the future and do it before they do it if you want a chance to stop some of these moves. And if we can put defenders closer to shots, then we can just go back to the green window, the regular shooting, because when you shoot a contested shot, you can throw in all that random stuff with the contest. This is a video game, so you want people to have fun, but this is the only way out. And here's the thing, even with the shooting being so random and all this crazy stuff happening, you're seeing people hit shots. I'm hitting shots, you're hitting shots. You're seeing people on the other team hit shots. I'm seeing people on the other team hit shots. So if you do something to the shooting to make it easier, we're all gonna be shooting lights out. Everything is gonna go up from where it is right now. People are starting to figure things out. They're getting better. With more and more time, everybody's getting better and better at the game. But you have to be honest, in the games that you're playing online, you are seeing people hit shots. So you might be frustrated. Hey, you're missing some shots you think you should be making. We all get frustrated. I, every time I get one of those fast releases when I'm open, I'm like, what in the world is this? Like right there, I just got that man leaning and then I got one of those fast shots. Couldn't time it right. That's tough. It's like the frames just drop. Like you just drop like 10 frames in that second is crazy. But regardless, you're still seeing the shots drop in all of these modes that we're playing. So I don't know what they're gonna do about the shooting. All I know is that every year when the game first comes out, everybody really complains about the shooting. I remember one year, I forgot which 2K it was. This was hilarious. The game wasn't even out yet. It was coming out in a few hours. The game was coming out at midnight. People were playing it in the afternoon, maybe 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. And they were already saying, you need to patch the shooting. Who remember, what, what 2K was that? I remember the creators too that said that. Floater alert, I'm loving the floaters in this game. I re that was hilarious. So every year it's the same thing. And then they're gonna patch it and then the next thing you know, it'll just be like how it always is. Floater alert. What I really like about this game is the cat breaker system because it actually changes your builds. You can make builds that other people can't make once you unlock the cat breakers. And unlike previous years, cause they would do that. I remember one year, people were selling legend accounts. Who remembers that? The legend reward was so good that year. You could make builds that nobody else could make. They gave you some great boost. It was so good that when people got legend, they were selling them. And I remember somebody sold one for like 10K. It, it was crazy. But what they've done this year is they're still gonna give that advantage to the people that go all the way to Legend, but they're inviting everybody else who isn't gonna make it to Legend, but maybe you could get to Starter 3 or whatever it is. Starter 3, most people that play the game can get there eventually. That's not too difficult to get to. Then the second one is another one that's pretty tough, but if you play 2K a lot, you could probably get there. You don't have to no life the game. You don't have to play like thousands of hours like you do to get to Legend. You don't have to do that. But you could potentially get to 10 of them. 
But I like how they're giving the different types of gamers a chance to get in on this action to make your players and make your builds better than people who don't get there. So I think they're doing a good job with that. Hey, what a lob. I like the max plus one as well, but I don't like that that's pay to win because at the start of the season, you could just buy the level skips and then you get the max plus one and you could be better than people who don't pay for it. It is going to reset every season, but at the start of the season, the people who are buying are going to be ahead of the people who aren't buying. That's tough. So I don't like that aspect of it. And look at me looking like Steve Nash running around in the paint. So these are my first impressions. I know when the game first came out, a lot of people said the dribbling sucks. The dribblers are already dribbling though. The game's been out about a week and a half. They're already out there moving and dribbling and comboing and doing what they do. If you're a good dribbler, you, you still got the moves. The shooting is always gonna be a debate. I'm gonna guess that they will change it because usually they do. The pressure, there's just too much pressure. Every year, you see, when the game first comes out, you see the vision that 2K tries to go in for like that first week or two, or maybe even the first month or two. But eventually, they have to cave to the pressure. It happens every year. <laughs> you know they have to cave eventually. So watching the cave is always funny. The cycle, the 2K cycle of watching that happen is just pure jokes. So let me know in the comment section your first impressions of this game now that it's been out over a week. But be careful what you wish for because there are pros and cons, especially with the shooting. As discussed here in this video, you're seeing people hit shots even though we're all missing shots we wish we could be making and we used to be making, but it is what it is. My songs, he quit the game, Lob City and My Camo are now available on all streaming platforms. So now I have access to three contact dunks. I've got gold badges for shooting. I've got the gold dribbling badges. I've got gold challenger, gold glove. Going under, are you going under? Come on, cuz. Coast to coast. Oh, throwing it down.